Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and we returned in 1983 for what was my first non-movie adaptation Star Wars comic ever as a kid. I'm your host, Nathan B. Butler. The issue we're looking at this time is Star Wars from Marvel Comics number 82, entitled Diplomacy. Yeah, this is a really nice condition copy, uh, one of the direct-to-retailers copies here, as opposed to... My original copy from when I was a kid, that's all kinds of beat up. You can see the edges are all messed up, and yeah, it's like, it's not even closing exactly right anymore. I mean, it's it's kind of a basket case, but I do still own the thing, which I think is a testament to the fact that I really did like these stories uh, when I was younger. Where you can find this these days, of course, is in the pages of Star Wars Omnibus a long time ago, Volume 4, though we are nearing the end of this particular omnibus here. Now, this story begins sort of a long-running story, a long-running concept that we get throughout a little while here in the post-Return of the Jedi Marvel era. Yes, the first story arcs are forming in the era after the films in actual official Star Wars published materials rather than fan fiction of the time. The story basically starts with Admiral Akbar noting that, and you see this in some of the first dialogue, that Leia and Han are off on Tatooine. So that means that this is taking place either during the events of Jawas of Doom or shortly thereafter before they've returned. So Leia and Han are off. They need Luke because they need to send someone out as representative of the Alliance, which will soon be renamed the Alliance of Free Planets, to go and visit different worlds to try to get members, to try to uh, bring representatives together so they can form a new representative government for the galaxy and get input from all over the place. But they need Luke to do this because he's really sort of the hero of the rebellion, and with Leia gone, he's really the one that's most recognized. Plif decides to go along with him. Plif, the little telepathic hujib to see the sights and such and go uh, and experience part of this. And, of course, he is uh, a primary character of the Marvel series, so it makes sense. It's not just throwing a random character in here. Uh, he and his people have become a pretty important part of the post-Empire Strikes Back Star Wars EU, at least as far as Marvel is concerned. One place they decide to go is to the planet Iskalon. Now, you may remember back when we had the Iskalon effect and Tidal and R2-D2 to the rescue that we had some pretty significant events happening on Iskalon. They were searching for Tavanus and whatnot, but there was an Imperial missile that blew up on Iskalon, caused a huge tidal wave that wound up destroying a lot of things, uh, wound up uh, killing a lot of people, including Primor, the leader, and we almost saw our characters get killed by the collaborator within their ranks, only to wind up finding that the... the husband of the collaborator, who is also the son of the former leader, then when all is said and done, basically tells Luke and them, get out of here. You know, this devastation has been caused by the Empire partially brought on by these other, you know, air breathers out there. This is a world of aquatic peoples, and we're not having anything with it anymore. So get out of here until the Empire is gone. Don't come back. Of course, now the Empire is gone. So the question is of whether or not they're willing to join in this new alliance, this new government that they are trying to form. Unfortunately, upon arriving, Luke learns very quickly that two things are amiss here. One, we've got some unexpected visitors on the planet, and two, on his first encounter with the Escalonians again, yeah, they're not interested. Empire or not, air breathers still mean trouble, so they still need to get the heck off the planet. Now, I mentioned some unexpected visitors. Way back, about uh, 10 issues ago, just about, we got to see the what we thought might be the final appearance of Cheeto and Rick Duel. But Danny, the other member of that trio that we met in the Stenak Shuffle, took off as a stowaway aboard the Millennium Falcon. So we saw her for one more issue, Last Bane, and then she took off as well. So since then, we haven't seen Danny, we haven't seen Cheeto, we haven't seen Rick Duel, nor have we figured out whether or not those three ever got back together, or if it's still Danny on her own and the other two on their own. Only now it turns out they have linked back up together, no hard feelings and all, and they've wound up on the planet Iskalon, on the remains of one of the floating cities that had been there for air breathers. So having landed on Pavilion, that ruined city. Luke kind of reads them the riot act and whatnot. What the heck are you doing salvaging the remains of this city? You know, there are people living here. This is their society. What are you trying to do? Eventually, they wind up meeting the Escalonians who set a trap for them to bring one of those uh, huge serpent creatures to try to eat them, as we saw previously, the one that uh, killed the collaborator. And at this point, you know, it, again, it's you need to get off the planet. Okay? Nothing has changed. 
get off the planet. But at least Monet does say that his own feelings don't enter into it, which makes us wonder if maybe he wants to join, but it's the school itself. It's all the other uh, fish people, the Escalonians, who say no because of the damage that had been wrought. They're just a little gun-shy over the whole thing. At that point, Kiro, who was part of the attacking group, who we saw last back in that Escalonian arc, decides to basically risk being shunned from his planet forever to go with Luke and the others. He gets in some ceremonial garb that would allow him to uh, live off-planet as long as he recycles the water from time to time, and despite the fact that this would mean that he could never return home again, or he shouldn't be allowed to ever return home again, he decides to leave with them. So Kiro, and Cliff, and Luke, and Rick Duel, and Danny, and Cheeto all take off in two different vessels, leaving from Iskalon. And we will pick up with them in a future issue as they continue their journey together. That group of six characters, only one of which is a film character, which I think is kind of an interesting dynamic here because we don't tend to see that much in the Marvel series. But Kiro is now an active member of the Alliance alongside Luke, and he will play a starring role in some future stories alongside Luke. So, that begs the question. This story, number 82, Diplomacy, by Joe Duffy, Mary Joe Duffy, with Ron Friends doing the art again, is this an essential read? I would say for mainstream modern EU readers, no. It's not particularly impactful in the overall grand scheme of things with so many other Star Wars books and comics out there. On the other hand, I would say that for a Marvel reader, this is an essential read, because we need to see what happens to bring all these characters together, particularly Kiro, so we can see other things happen with those characters in the near future. Uh, this is really setting up some of the character dynamics we're going to see as we move towards the final issue, which is issue number 107. So for Marvel readers, it's essential. Otherwise, not so much. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the readers.